The Koch family is the third richest family in the world. The family's estimated wealth is around 124 billion. The family controls Koch Industries, which is the second largest private company in the world. Koch Industries has revenue of over 115 billion, and it employs over 120,000 employees. Koch Industries is involved in energy, fiber, petroleum, chemicals, polymers, minerals, fertilizer, paper, equipment, cloud computing, finance, trading, and investments. Koch Industries was founded by Fred Koch in 1940. This is the story of how Fred Koch founded the second largest private company. Please watch the full video. We at Business Chronicles tell the stories of extraordinarily successful people. Please subscribe to our channels to help us in making more videos. Fred Chase Koch was born on September 23, 1900 in Quanah, Texas. His father, Harry Koch, was a Dutch immigrant who worked at a printer shop in Workham, Netherlands, then in The Hague, Germany, before finally migrating to the United States in 1888. He bought and ran the Tribune Chief newspaper. Fred Koch's mother was Maddie Mixon. Fred's father was overbearing, and when he was young, Fred once ran from home to stay with the Comanche tribe. Fred had a passion for learning and earned several scholarship offers in his teens. He attended Rice Institute in Texas from 1917 to 1919. Rice Institute was a prestigious private school at the time and later became Rice University. While at the institute, Fred was elected class president in his sophomore year and was a member of the Engineering Society. Afterward, Fred enrolled at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, where he studied chemical engineering and was part of its boxing team. He graduated in 1922, among the first people from MIT to obtain a degree in chemical engineering. Fred Koch started off professionally working for the Texas Company, based in Port Arthur, Texas, as a chemical engineer. He only worked there for some time before moving to England to work as a chief engineer for Medway Oil and Storage Company on the Isle of Grain in Kent. In 1925, Koch returned to the United States and joined two former MIT classmates, running Keith Winkler Engineering in Wichita, Kansas. Later on, the firm became Keith Winkler Koch. However, Keith would not stay at the firm for long. He left and the firm changed its name to Winkler Koch Engineering Company. In 1927, Koch came up with the thermal cracking process for efficiently producing gasoline from crude oil. At the time, oil companies were enjoying a boom in demand for energy thanks to the Industrial Revolution and advancements in automotive transportation. However, the industry was dominated by a handful of large companies that could leverage their scale to produce much more efficiently. Koch's new invention was set to destabilize this established order by making small producers efficient in their production and better positioned to compete. The large oil players were not impressed. They filed 44 lawsuits against Winkler Koch with the intention of running the company out of business. Koch and his partner spent the following years buried in litigation. Even Winkler's former employer, Universal Oil Products LLC, joined the fray in 1929, suing Winkler for patent infringement. It alleged that Winkler Koch's new invention was no different from the intellectual property Winkler accessed while at the company. The litigation extended for a while effectively inhibiting Winkler Koch from achieving business success in the United States. Koch looked eastward in pursuit of better opportunities. In 1929, Koch took his business to the Soviet Union, where there was interest in his technology. Initially, he was concerned that the Soviet administration would not pay him for his work, but after entering into a concrete agreement with the Soviet government and receiving an advanced payment, he was convinced. Between 1929 and 1932, Koch helped the Soviet Union build 15 refineries, forming the foundation of the country's oil industry. He also organized trainings for Bolshevik engineers. As the 1930s progressed, international appeal for Koch's technology grew. He was able to secure new business contracts in Germany, England, France, the Middle East, and other Asian countries. Back home, Winkler and Koch eventually won all but one of the lawsuits levied against them, receiving a handsome $1.5 million settlement. Later on, even the one case they lost was revoked after it was discovered the judge had received a bribe from the large oil companies. 
Coke worked at Winkler Coke until 1941. In 1940, Coke joined new partners to start Wood River Oil and Refining Company. In 1946, Wood River bought Rock Island Oil and Refining Company in Oklahoma. In 1948, Wood River built a pipeline to transport its products to Rockford, Illinois. Wood River also bought ranches. In 1943, the company acquired Spring Creek Ranch in Kansas Flint Hills. In 1951, the company snapped up a Montana ranch, and in 1953, it added a ranch in Texas to its portfolio. In 1961, Wood River rebranded to Rock Island Oil and Refining Company. That same year, Charles Koch, the second son of Fred Koch, joined Rock Island. He was appointed president in 1966 and assumed the roles of chairman and CEO when his father died in 1967. In 1968, Rock Island was renamed Koch Industries to honor Fred Koch. Fred Koch self-published a book in 1960 called A Businessman Looks at Communism. In the book, he narrated the experiences he had in the Soviet Union and warned of the dangers that communism posed to the free world. Fred Koch served on the board of his alma mater, MIT. He also joined the John Birch Society. In addition to sitting on the board of MIT, Fred Koch gave financial assistance to its students who were in need. In 1953, together with his wife Mary, Fred Koch founded the Fred and Mary Koch Foundation. The nonprofit foundation had a goal to enhance Kansas residents' quality of life by donating to programs that advanced art, human services, environmental stewardship, education, and enablement of at risk youth. Every year, the foundation gave grants to initiatives that worked in either of those areas. Since its inception, the foundation has donated millions of dollars to impactful causes. For example, it has funded the Nature Conservancy, a $1 million donation to fund its purchase of an 11,000-acre tall grass prairie national preserve in Flint Hills, Kansas, and Wichita Center for the Arts, a $90,000 donation to build a garden with eclectic sculptures. It also funds the Kansas YMCA Job Prep Program, the Bill of Rights Institute, the Music Theater of Wichita, and the annual symphony in the Flint Hills. In education, the foundation has distributed over 3.9 million in scholarships to students and funded the Youth Entrepreneurs Program, which provides life-changing opportunities for thousands of high school students to learn business skills. The foundation also funds Reality U, facilitating the administration of financial literacy classes to Kansas youth. Fred Koch came from a family of immigrants. Normally immigrants work harder. When you work hard and you love studying, that's a lethal combination to get success. Fred Koch worked hard and founded the company which today is the second largest private company in the world. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel to watch more videos like this.